The unexpanded Commodore VIC-20 only had 5K of RAM and therefore creative ways had to be found to maximise the available RAM. The display memory would use some of this memory and therefore one option is to make use of some of the screen and colour map for code and data. So this is a great way of gaining extra storage for our programmes. If we have a look at the screen map to start with, the screen map runs from location 1E00 to 1FFF hex, which is location 7680 to 8191. Although, strictly speaking, it only goes up to 8185 because a 22 by 23 column screen takes 506 bytes. So if we have a look at those locations, I put the letter A there. And then if I also put uh, something at the end of the screen, 8185,1, now this won't actually display yet because I need to put something in the color map to tell it to be visible. So I'm going to put something at location 38905 and that will set it to a black text on white background. The colour map runs from location 38400 to 38911 although it actually only goes up to 38905 hex 37F9 so that's 960 hex to 97F9 and then again we've got six extra bytes free because it will actually go up to 97FF that's the amount of storage that we've got there. Uh, interestingly the colour map is actually stored in 4-bit 1K RAM chip. So we can store data in the colour map, but we can only store 4 bits in each location. So we can't use it for code, but we can use it for data if we wanted to. To demonstrate the screen map and colour map being used for code and data, I've created three examples. The first example I want to show is based on the 100 doors problem, as listed on Rosetta Code. So I'll clear the screen, enter the code and explain the problem. The 100 door problem states that there are 100 doors in a row that are all initially closed. You make 100 passes by the doors. The first time through, you visit every door and toggle the door. If the door's closed, you open it. If it's open, you close it. The second time, you only visit every second door. So that would be door 2, 4, 6, etc. And you toggle each one that you visit. The third time, you visit every third door. So that would be door 3, 6, 9, etc. Until you visit the 100th door. So you keep going until you've made 100 passes. This program lists the doors which are open at the end of the last pass and these should be the first 10 perfect squares. So that would be uh, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81 and 100. And it uses the bottom five rows of screen memory to store the statuses of the 100 doors as either being closed, in which case it will be set to value 81, which displayed on the screen is a filled circle, or open, which is value 87, which again on the screen is an unfilled circle. The values 81 and 87 are used to create a nice visual representation if we decide to show the processing in the screen map. If we have a quick look at the code, so line 10 for i equals 38796. So this line is setting the last five lines of the color map to black text on a white foreground. And then below that we have the line 20d equals 8185. Well this is found in the start of those last five rows in the screen map and that's where we're going to use for storage. So this is essentially instead of using a, uh, an array. So instead of using dim and taking up room in basic memory, we're going to take up room on the screen instead. So if we run this program, we'll clear the screen first and then run the program. And there we are, we can see that it's doing its processing in screen memory. So this representation isn't needed on the screen, it's purely, at least it doesn't need to be visible on the screen. I didn't need to set the colour map to make it visible, and it works fine without being visible. The whole point of the code is to display those numbers at the end. So there we are, we've got the perfect squares from 1 to 100, the 10 first perfect squares. So that program has worked properly, but it hasn't taken up any basic storage as far as this, uh, this array of 100 doors. It's done it all in screen memory. And we can actually run that program again, but this time hide that area. I clear the screen, and then we'll reduce the number of lines by five. So this line uses a location 36867 to reduce the number of lines visible down to 18. Uh, if you want to find out a bit more about that, you can have a look at our previous video about changing screen dimensions on the Commodore VIC-20. So if I do that, and there we are, we can see that we've removed those last lines on the screen. And then if I clear the screen again, run the program, and the processing is going on, but this time it's not, nothing's visible. 
it's all happening in that area that we can't actually see and it's worked exactly the same it's listed our perfect squares to represent the open doors which are left after running that routine the next example is very similar to the previous one, except this time it stores data in the unused colour map. So with the colour map, there are two 512 blocks. There's a location from 9400, which is unused, and that's 512 bytes. And then there's a location from 9600. These are both in hex, by the way. Uh, 9400 is 3788, and 9600 is 38400 in decimal. So on an unexpanded VIC, or one with a 3K RAM, the colour map starts at 9600. On a machine with an 8K RAM or more, then the colour map would start at 9400. So uh, we're using an un unexpanded VIC here, so we can use location 9400 quite happily. So we've got 512 nibbles there that we can use. Uh, now they are nibbles, they're 4-bit nibbles, so that is something we need to be careful of. Uh, so when we read from those locations, we need to and it with 15, so we just get the lower nibble because the high nibble is unstable and we can't predict what will be there. So in this example, uh, line 10 is setting uh, the location where we're storing, we're using for storage for the statuses of these 100 doors as 37888, which as I say is a hex 9400 which is the unused part of the colour map and then it'll go through it it'll set that all to zero the reason it's setting that to zero is that we're using zero in this case for closed doors and one for open doors because it's simple and because uh, we don't need any visual representation in this case because it's not going to alter colour memory uh, further down you can see how we're peaking and poking and we're anding with those locations so line 40 when we peak we also and with 15 and again on line 90 when we peak, we also end with 15, so we just get the lower nibble. Well, there's no need to clear the screen because it's not going to corrupt it. So if I run the program, and there we are, it's displayed our first 10 perfect squares. So the colour map is a great area for, for claiming extra storage because it doesn't alter what is represented in the screen. And as long as you can use data that is small enough uh, to be contained within a nibble, so the numbers 0 to 15, the, then it's great. The last example I'm going to show actually stores a machine language routine in the last line of the screen memory. So this routine is a short piece of code to cycle the screen and border colours. It's from a previous video about how to hand assemble to machine code on the VIC-20. So we look at the program here, line 10 for i equals 3, triple eight, six. Again, we're setting the colour map to black text on a white background and this is just for a visual representation. It doesn't actually matter for the code. And then line 20 for i equals 8166. So this is the location that we want to load our machine code routine into. And if I poke to that location, we can see that it's within the visible area of the screen map. So I'll put the character A there, and then I'll set the color map to be black text on a white background. And there we are, there's our letter A. So that's the location that we're going to load our machine language routine into. If I clear the screen, and then we'll run the program, and there we are. So that's our machine language routine there. And then if we sys to that location where we put the letter A a minute ago, and there we are, that's our machine language routine running from screen memory. And we could hide that if we wanted to. So I reduced the number of lines displayed on the screen by one. There we are, and then if I clear the screen, run our program again, and then sys to the location, and there we are, it's still in memory, but this time it's not visible on the screen, so if we wanted to, we could store a bit of code. If we just needed that little bit of extra room, we could store that code on the last line, or last lines, we could reduce it by more lines if we wanted to, and give ourselves that bit of extra space in memory. So we've shown that we can reclaim up to 512 bytes from the screen map to be used for either code or data. And then on top of that, 512 nibbles from the colour map, uh, which we can use for data. And we can use that five, those 512 nibbles without disturbing the screen. And on top of that, there's also a further 512 nibbles that we can play with if we don't mind some corruption to the screen. So a pretty handy increase in available storage. Uh, hopefully you, you found this interesting. Uh, do have a look at the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website. Uh, have a look at some of our other videos. And it'd be great if you could share this video and please subscribe.